Assalamualaikum. My name is Nur Batri Shabitu Wama Azharan and my metric summary is 288523. I am going to be presenting executive summary. The steel industry is important for economic growth but has negative environmental and social impacts. This paper examines its sustainability challenges and proposes solutions. It focuses on reducing carbon footprints and addressing worker safety, labor rights and community well-being. Corporate governments, in other hand, is explored as a means to promote responsible decision making and overall performance. The industry must adopt sustainability, sustainable practices, lower environmental impact, prioritize worker and community well being, also implement effective corporate governance for long term sustainability. <laughs> Assalamualaikum, my name is Nur Shahida binti Ayub and my metric number is 278116. Busam Malaysia mandated issues in mean and S markets to declare CSR initiative in annual reports using ESG for environmental and social responsibility assessment. The Handbook on Sustainability Reporting was updated in 2018, addressing environmental concerns and global legislation ensuring compliance for Malaysian investors and stakeholders. The evolution of sustainable disclosure requirements in Malaysia has increased transparency and accountability for companies as social media has facilitated stakeholder disclosure. This has led to increased transparency about sustainability performance, improved company reputation, and brand value. Future factors include increasing importance of sustainability to investors and regulators, as well as the growing demand for sustainability data. Disclosure led to reasoning for choosing scope of sustainability statement for Malaysia Steelworks KL Berhad is must disclose five categories of scope 3 emissions in 2022, covering business travel, employee commuting, and upstream risk assets. As per amendments, public listed companies must disclose two categories and waste generated in operations in the coming year. Must this commitment to net zero carbon by 2050 is Evident. Disclosure of the role of the highest governance body in setting companies' purpose, values, and strategies, which incorporate sustainability considerations from Malaysia Steelwork Care Berhad, is the board of directors currently has two standing committees. The Sustainability Committee meets annually to discuss sustainability issues and evaluate the company's climate related initiative. The committee presents updates to the board for further debate and approval. Master's Risk Management Committee and Board of Directors manage climate change risk, a spending framework to include environmental, social and governance, ESG, mitigation approach, disclosure related to the company's governance structure and practices for measures towards KL Berhad is must still emphasize the importance of solid corporate governance for a sustainable, respectable firm. Employees must adhere to the company's code of conduct and code of ethics, promoting transparency and accountability for stakeholder trust and integrity. Disclosure related to the company's approach to stakeholder engagement and materiality assessment for Malaysia Steelworks KL Berhad is must prioritize active and transparent stakeholder engagement to maintain its reputation as a trustworthy and responsible steel manufacturer by identifying important stakeholders and implementing strategies must still manage their concerns and interests in business decisions they keep stakeholders informed about activities, progress and future goals, ensuring a strong and responsible business.
disclosure related to the company's approach to climate change and carbon emissions from Malaysia Steelworks KL Berhad is technology curve drive must still to achieve net zero by reducing carbon emissions and environmental impact requiring continuous monitoring. Mastil aims to incorporate emerging technologies to reduce GHG emissions, requiring strategic planning and risk assessment. Assalamualaikum, my name is Nurin Syahira Alami and my metric number is 277X61. I will represent the company Southern Steel Berhad. So, for the Southern Steel Berhad, sustainability practices are outlined in six criteria. For the first one, they define a sustainability statement which focuses on the group's upstream operations. So for this year, downstream business impact have been included to better reflect the group's overall impact and demonstrate a greater commitment to sustainability. For the second one, they being the company's top governance authority. So the Southern Stable Hut, they, they set its vision, objective and strategy, including the sustainability. So for the stakeholders are the people or organization that influence by business activity and feedback is analyzed against business activities. So for the third one, they discussing the group's sustainability approach to managing and mitigating environmental impacts, emphasizing operational excellence, safe working conditions, compliance, green product development and human capital development. For the fourth one, they have it covered governance procedures such as the Board of Directors and Sustainability Steering Committee which set and review sustainability goals, strategies, management procedures, projects, targets and performance. For the fifth, using internal and external service to determine the business impact and stakeholder impacts of material issues related to sustainability in the steel sector. For the monthly SSC meetings are used to discuss material issues and action plans. This, they address it climate change and carbon emotion. They use EAF, a greener alternative to blast furnace and blast oxygen furnace, contributing to the industrial global decarbonization. The company began reporting scope 1 and scope 2 GHG emission from prior operation in Penang in fiscal year 2022. They are using ISO 14404, the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, and the World Resources Institute GHG Protocol to Estimate Emission. Assalamualaikum, my name is Muhammad Karu Izzah B. Shahudin, metric number 291609. We will continue about Anju Resources Perhat. The Anju Group Director, both collectively and individually, are compared to assume a proactive stand in efficiently and ethically guiding the company administration. They bear a legal and fiduciary obligation to imperatively prioritize the Anju Group best interest, while effectively advocating for and safeguarding the concern of shareholder and stakeholder. All with the ultimate aim of standing corporate sustainability in alignment with the company vision. Apart from that, directors are strongly advised to partake in diverse training program and engage in on-site visit to business location. This endeavors the purpose of continually updating their knowledge and improving their skill. By doing so, directors will be equipped to fulfill their responsibility effect effectively and remain well and well informed about pertinent matters such as industrial sector issue and industry advancement. Finally, with the company best interest of maintaining confidence in mind, the board and the world to furnish shareholder with truth, precise and high quality information promptly and consistently. That's all for me. Hi, now I'll talk about the Micron Steel Berhad for sustainability integration and governance. Micron Steel Berhad's board of directors incorporates sustainability in the company purses, values and strategies. The next point is the risk and sustainability committee oversees governance while management committees regularly address operational and EST topics. Sustainability matters are evaluated based on stakeholder relevance considering the internal value chain, competition, investments and regulation. The next is environmental management and resource conservation. Micron Steel will hard prioritize environmental management complying with regulation and minimizing resource 
conception collaboration with stakeholders energy consumption management steel scrap recycling and waste reduction measures are implemented water conservation or pollution control and supply sustainability assessment are also important focuses the third point is addressing labor rights and cross border trade micro steel were hard recognized the importance of labor rights and compliance with international labor standards inconsistent adoption and enforcement of international labor organization which call ilo standards among member nations can lead to trade sanctions the company manages cross border trade risk by looking beyond domestic labor standard and uh, considering global expectations the last point will be the carbon reduction and renewable energy initiative micron steel berhad aligns its carbon goals with nation climate target the company aims to reduce its manufacturing of operation carbon footprint below a self control impost threshold gradually decreasing it by 10% every 3 years the company also incentivizes green projects and efficiency initiatives are prioritized for near term carbon footprint reduction cac steel holdings for hire is a stand up business in terms of sustainability disclosure and openness. The company excels in transparency by covering all aspects of disclosure, adhering to international standards and providing the justification and references. They actively involve stakeholders in identifying and addressing sustainability issues, particularly focusing on reducing greenhouse gas emissions and preparing for climate change. CSC Steel Holdings demonstrate moral corporate conduct through public policies and charters related to human rights, whistleblower protection, CSR and stakeholder engagement. They also uphold accountability by releasing governance performance metrics and policies. With a score of 7, the emphasis on openness enhances their reputation and stakeholder trust. CLC Steel Holdings set the standard for the industry and encourages others to follow suit by fostering transfer- transparency and sustainability. Return on assets ROA is a crucial metric that measures a company's profitability and efficiency in utilizing its assets. A higher ROE is essential for several reasons. Firstly, the higher ROE indicates that a company is generating more profit from its assets. Secondly, a higher ROE signifies operational efficiency. It suggests that the company is utilizing its assets. Lastly, a higher ROE enhances a company's competitiveness and attractiveness to investors. It demonstrates that the company is generating strong financial performance and utilizing its assets efficiently. From the chart, we can see that Micron Steel Berhad have the higher ROA than another company which is 71.5%. Companies with higher sustainability disclosure ratings such as Malaysia Steel Works KL Berhad, Southern Steel Berhad, Micron Steel Berhad, Anju Resources Berhad, and CSC Steel Holding Berhad tends to have greater return on assets ROA. This can be attributed to several factors. Firstly, their dedication to, to sustainable businesses practices enhances their reputation and investor confidence. Investors who value sustainability are more likely to invest in these companies, resulting in increased investment inflows and larger asset holdings. Secondly, this company prioritizes operational efficiency and risk management. They take proactive measures to improve operational effectiveness, reduce waste, and enhance energy efficiency. This will lead to improve financial performance and higher ROE. Lastly, higher sustainable disclosure ratings provide this company with easier access to capital and resources. Investors who prioritize social issues are attracted to these ratings, allowing to the businesses to drive growth, improve financial performance, and boost ROE. Okay, now I will continue about recommendation Bursa Malaysia improve sustainability disclosure score. Firstly, Bursa Malaysia should introduce a sustainability linker incentive program that reward companies for changing their sustainability reporting and disclosure. Financial incentives such as reduced listing fees on preferential access to capital markets 
can be offered to firm that this demonstrate notable progress in sustainability based on predefined target aligning with recognized framework like the GRI or SASB. Second, Bursa Malaysia should strengthen regulatory requirement for sustainability reporting by making it mandatory for all listed company. Clear standard and key performance indicator KPIS should be specified and sector specific disclosure guidelines should be developed in cooperation with industry association, sustainability expert and stakeholders. Moreover, Bursa Malaysia should foster knowledge sharing and collaboration among listed company to exchange their understanding of sustainability reporting practice. Workshops, seminars and conference can be organized to share best practice, case study and success story from company with exemplary sustainability disclosure scope. That's all for me. Thank you. Masti's CSR program has invested 85,000 ringgit in social program M at enhancing the quality of life in areas near its activities. The Ratana Foundation, Malaysia Nation Society, Royal Malaysia Police College Kuala Lumpur are among the key support organizations. Serta Stilber High Corporate Social Responsibility CSR. This company, they committed to economic and social responsibility by ensuring product quality meets local and global standards. They have certified SSP on the ECO 032-2032, are eco labeling standard and are preparing for a global pandemic by utilizing resources wisely. They are also pursuing product certification through the CRIPCAS International eco labeling Scheme. Next, I will continue about the CSR of Anju Resources Berhad. The Anju Resources Berhad is dedicated to corporate sustainability and acts as a progressive, caring and responsible corporate citizen. It prioritizes the well-being of the community, support national development and protect the environment. This is achieved through various initiatives such as educa educational support, healthy care assistance, skill training and the implementation of safety, healthy and environmental measures to ensure responsible and sustainability business practice. That's all for me. Thank you. Uh, this slides for corporate social responsibility which is called CSR. Micron still hard practices its CSR uh, based on emphasizes a symbiotic relationship with society and communities. Trading severe floods in December 2021, the company provided cash aid to affected staff and organized voluntary groups for cleaning up flood damaged homes. They actively engage with industry players, research institutes, and regulatory bodies to enhance knowledge, innovation, and talent in the steel industry. Uh, the company also collaborate with higher learning institutes and a memorandum of understanding with University Technical Malaysia demonstrate their commitment to nurturing the next generation. Lastly, the company practices its social responsibility by selective causes aligned with their objective, including supporting and underprivileged children and making donations and sponsorship. These efforts ensure long-term sustainability for both Micron and the community it serves. So overall, Micron still hard practices its CSR based on economical and social services. CSC still holdings per head excels in all four levels of corporate responsibility, economic, legal, ethical, and philanthropic. Economically, the company is profitable, competitive, and delivers value to shareholders, clients, and staff. Legally, it complies with all applicable laws and regulations, ensuring governance and protection for stakeholders. Ethically, CSC still upholds values like integrity and human rights, respecting employees, customer, and the local community. In terms of philanthropy, the company goes beyond obligations, engaging in charitable initiatives and supporting environmental preservation, education, healthcare, and cultural events. Overall, CSC Steel Holdings demonstrates its commitment to corporate social responsibility, benefiting stakeholders and making a positive impact. Since 2020, Mastis ABSC policy 
and whistleblowing policy have been revised to emphasize hard honesty, accountability, and anonymous reporting. In 2022, the company held 20 training sessions and had zero corruption cases. Before engaging, third parties must sign anti-bribery statements and must still perform due diligence. The ABSC policy highlights potential risk areas and risk for prevention, while the whistleblowing policy provides secrecy and anonymity. Sultan Stable Heart has implemented an anti-bribery and anti-corruption policy which is ISO 37001 certificate. The group employs HLMG practices to detect and investigate threats in the anti-bribery and bribery management system and develop mitigation strategies based on identified risks. The group is committed to ethical business conduct and strictly prohibits bribery and corruption in each country it operates in. The Board of Directors Audit and Risk Management Committee approved policies and oversees their implementation. The group ABCMS Compliance Function Officer oversees ABCMS inverse implementation and ensures priorities are achieved. For the concerns or suspicion about bribery and corruption should be reported to the head of Internet Audit or the head of Human Resources. The anti-bribery corruption policy is published on the company's website and is enforced by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission MSCC 2009. Filmcast International September Heart has awarded APMS certification to the company and is operated subsidy. Now I will continue about the anti-bribery anti-corruption policy of Anju Resources Bahar. The Anju Resources Bahar is dedicated to upholding the highest level of ethical, moral and legal conduct in its business operation. In line with this commitment, the group strictly adhere to Anju Resources Bahar anti-bribery and corruption policy and pro pro procedure ABAC policy and the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission Act 2009 MAAC Act. Therefore, it is essential that they strictly comply with the MAFC Act, the, the ABAC policy and any other similar policy, as well as all relevant acts, law, rule and regulation while performing their duties. Apart from that, to combat correction effectively, the Anjo Resources Bahak has implemented comprehensive measures and established average appropriate control. These measures are outlined in detail within the A ABAC policy. It is important to note that the ABAC policy should be read, should be read by Anjo Resources Bahak employees in conjunction with this code to ensure a clear understanding of the expectation and obligation regarding ethical conduct. That's all for me. Thank you. For the last slide, anti-bribery and anti-corruption policy. First, revised policies and confidential reporting mechanism. Micron implemented a revised vice serving policy, code of conduct and ethics to emphasize integrity and transparency. It is also clear guidelines and expectations were provided to employees, fostering an ethical work environment. A confidential reporting mechanism was established and encouraging employees to report corruption, bribery or abuse of power for yearly detection and prevention of corrupt practices. Second, anti-corruption and anti-fraud framework. Micron introduced new policies under the anti-corruption and anti-fraud framework to strengthen their corruption measures. It also uh, shows specific vulnerabilities including strict due diligence procedures for encouraging with third parties guidelines for give and entertainment and protocols for high price, high risk jurisdictions. This policy ensure comprehensive control throughout migrants operation minimizing the occurrence of corruption within the organization the third the company extending anti-corruption practices to business part partners micro expects a uh, compliance with their policies and high ethical standard from business partners and associate they communicate their anti-corruption stance to supplies vendors and contract thus emphasizing the importance of adhering to ethical practices. 
Through formal agreements, Micron establishes mutual commitments to anti-corruption and anti-fraud principles, fostering a network of partners dedicated to an integrity. That's all from me. Thank you. CSC Steel Holdings Perhat has implemented crucial policies to ensure compliance and address potential issues. Firstly, whistleblowing policy when they allow reporting of misconduct and protects whistleblower from retaliation while audit committee oversees the process. Secondly, anti-corruption policy which they prohibits corrupt behavior and ensures complying with anti-corruption law and it will be monitored by the board of directors. Thirdly, antitrust policy. Basically, antitrust policy promotes ethical behavior and fair competition complying with competition requirements while legal department ensures adherence. Lastly, insider trading policy which they prohibit trading based on non-public information and disclosure to third parties and it is enforced by the company secretary. This policy demonstrates CSC still commitment to transparency, compliance and risk management. To conclude, all the company are committed to environmental responsibility and sustainable practices. However, Micron Steel Perhat has the highest performance of sustainability practices score among the five firms, indicating its commitment to sustainable businesses practice. The company also achieved the highest ROA of 71.5%, indicating effective resource management and a significant return on investment. Rusal measure can provide incentive for enterprise to improve sustainability disclosure scores through a sustainability link incentive program, regulatory standards certainly, and information sharing and collaboration among listed companies. By implementing these concepts, some measure can foster a culture of sustainability among listed business and accelerate positive transformation in the steel industry.